Uh, hello, welcome back to the Aerosoft DC-8 and I think we're going to do something a little bit different today. Um, so on the last flight we flew into this airport here which is um, Pango Pango which is in American Samoa and just for context it is literally in the middle of nowhere and there's not a lot around it uh, so I was thinking for today rather than do um, a longish flight to Australia or New Zealand or wherever it might be nice just to do a, a short hop so today we're going to fly just across the international date line and we're going to fly into Western Samoa or just Samoa, I think they call it there. Um, so there's an international airport here which is Fal Faleolo um, and the distance between those two is about 80 miles as the crow flies. Um, there's also another um, big island to the west which is a, a shield volcano and I thought it might be nice to take our passengers on a little tour around here uh, before we make our arrival. Um, so it shouldn't take too long to get the flight sorted. We don't have to do any um, INS setup or anything like that. I think that we can just navigate this thing on VOR. Um, I haven't actually um, got the flight ready in sim brief yet, which I do want to do just so we've got some some idea of uh, how much fuel to carry and stuff. So that's the first thing that we're going to do. Um, oh, let's get the flight ready. We are Pan American 4. We're going from NSTU. I think that's the right code. Um, to NSFA, NSFA. All right, that's done. So the departure weather, well, we've already seen it. It's a nice day and 80 miles away. Uh, it's also a nice day, 24 degrees, nice and clear. So it should be all right for, um, for if we do decide to do our little tour around this island the passengers. So let's uh, get this information quickly filled in. I'm not going to worry about the departure time. That's the aircraft type. We have to remember on this plane to change it to pounds. There's no um, option on the on the Aerosoft to change it to kilos as there wasn't on the real thing. Uh, so for fuel we've gonna, we're going to take our 45 minute reserve. Uh, we're going to take 20 minutes extra. Um, I have been finding that we burned a bit of extra fuel on the ground <clears throat> like more fuel on the ground uh, when we're getting ready and stuff than uh, what the flight plan usually calls for but I think that we'll have 20 minutes there and then we'll take some extra fuel here so I have no idea really how much uh, let's take um, 5,000 kilos 5,000 pounds rather and see how that does us uh, so the scheduled estimate is 55 minutes en route um, the runways it's selected the two easterly runways so the winds are calm here and the winds are 140 at 3 so the winds are pretty calm so we can probably just choose uh, which runway we go for ourselves Taxi time, we're going to leave it quite long for going out because it takes us a while to get set up. Uh, passengers, don't remember exactly how many uh, passengers we had on our last flight. Let's go 138. Um, uh, we're on the latest air rack. Oh, it looks like they've changed the option. Um, so for the actual route, it does it does suggest a route here, um, but I 
the departure, there's no departure, there's no Sid. Um, and for the arrival... Basically there's... These two aren't our arrivals, which we're not capable of. This top one is arrivals from the west and from the south, which we're not. And this one is from the east, Lavec. Um, so what my idea was, was maybe we could fly to... There it is. If we fly to Lavec, um, sort of flying along the airway, and then we'll just we'll just go VFR and then come around the island and then and then land however we want to land here. I'm just going to change that route to Lavec and that's a distance of 90 miles. Fine. So I'm going to generate the plan and just see how much uh, fuel we get suggested to take with us. Um, so I'm going to write down these numbers. So our zero fuel weight is 170,000 pounds. Our suggested fuel is 39,000 pounds. Um, and our final reserve fuel is going to be 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, they're fifteen and a half thousand pounds, and that's going to be our final reserve. And that gives us enough fuel to get back to our departure point in case um, in case they close the runway at the destination, which we're not expecting since we're flying in flight sim today. All right. Uh, so at the minute we are on external power, which is fine. Um, I purchased GSX-2 yesterday, so we've got an air bridge. Um, and hopefully we're going to see some passengers walk down here later. Um, I only realised um, a few days ago that there was an Orbex um, scenery for this very airport that we're at, but I missed it in the sale. Um, so not to worry, we're unfortunately um, in some horrible, horrible default scenery. Although, you know, there is like a lush, a lush rainforest there. Um, so, yeah. Um, right, let's get the aircraft set up then. The first thing is loading in some passengers. Um, so we've got 138 passengers. Um, did we say the zero fuel weight was 170? All right, so that's the zero fuel set. And I'll just put the fuel back to what it was for now. So 25,000 must, uh, must be what we landed with after the last flight. Talk to GSX and um, get them to cater the plane for our epic uh, one hour voyage across the water, not even one hour. Um, so I'm going to try and run through some of these from memory. Um, so generators are on, uh, electrical controls are on, we're on the 
external power. Um, so we've got indications on the AC. Uh, the light is set up. And pneumatic pressure is all off. Carbon compressors are off. Mast heater I've just switched on. Uh, fuel is all... Well, the main uh, fuel pumps are off at the minute. We'll, uh, we'll sort this out once we actually uh, fuel the aircraft. Okay, so on the overhead, um, the main thing really is that we don't need the INSs for this flight. So that's going to be a nice quick, uh, quick start up hopefully. Uh, windshield heat is on... Uh, warm up. Uh, engine anti ice is all off. You can put the seatbelt sign on and the no smoking sign on and the nav lights. Um, emergency lights are armed. The ignitions are off. Pito heat is off. Uh, so the radios, we want to tune in 112.5, which is our departure point. Just check that's right. We get 112.5. And the one on the other side, I'll switch to 113.9. Just so we know when we've got a signal uh, coming up from the other side. Um, I'm not going to bother with the NDBs right now. Uh, what altitude the flight plan have us going at? 6,000 feet. <laughs> okay. Uh, so I guess that means we're just going to be on local pressure the whole time. Uh, local pressure is 2982. 'm just running through the uh, checklist here to make sure I haven't missed anything uh, that's dead obvious um, I guess let's just connect the uh, jetway at this point so we'll operate jetways and it hasn't done anything now why ain't it done anything come on GSX it's a bit weird, it's like facing the opposite direction. Hmm, no idea. Oh well, maybe we won't have any jetways. <laughs> maybe we'll just uh we'll just have the passengers come in on a bus. That is a little bit strange though. Check that out.
GSX airport position. Parking has one jetway. Okay, well the jetway turned around. Maybe it'll connect now. Operate jetway. No. Uh, maybe I open the door. Shouldn't really have to open the door before we connect the jetway though. No. Oh well, GSX version 2. Uh, day 1 and it's... It's let us down. Um, not to worry, um, I'll just continue through the checklist here, uh, cabin pressure controller, um, I think that we'll just leave that set right down to zero. There, uh, which it is. I wonder if we can just like manually uh, leave the aircraft depressurized as well. How would we go about doing that? Hmm. Like how would we open the the uh, the air valves? Can't see it. I guess that we could um, we could just leave the cabin compressors turned off, and that would achieve the same thing. Um, get rid of galley power. It's it's not going to be time for any meals, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, hydraulics. Check the hydraulics. Okay, sorry, just had to step away for a second. Um, so the parking brake is set to be on, but um, we've got air brake pressure, but we don't have any hydraulic brake pressure. So how do we fix that? We can switch on the auxiliary hydraulic pump. Okay, so I've just removed and uh, reset the parking brake, and now we've got pressure. Hopefully that should be fine so we know that we are definitely on the parking brake. Um, check. Oil cooler doors, yeah they're already auto. A lot of these things are still set the way that they were off the previous flight. Um, Fuel boost pump things. Well, they should. Let's see if GSX will uh, refuel us. Try that jetway again. No, it hates us. Oh well, no passengers. And I also need to uh, move the stairs so that they don't stick into the wall. There's a fuel truck.
Right, so we've done it in a pretty haphazard way, but that's most of the initial um, sort of early pre-flight stuff out of the way. Fuel man is there. Um, I guess we just load the fuel in now. Like they've changed a few things in this in this latest GSX. Ah, it's not allowed to work it anymore, frankly. Um, so let's load in. What was it? Thirty-nine thousand pounds of fuel. Thirty-nine thousand pounds of fuel. Let's see if it does anything. Yeah, he is. So, yeah, I need to tell GSX that the wing of this aircraft is a bit higher than that because the fuel is not actually plugged in. <laughs> If I request passengers, whether it'll actually give me any then. Uh, request boarding. No, no boarding either. We got no jetway, so we can have no boarding. Ah, oh, enter number of passengers. Come up at the top. 138. What happens now? How are they actually going to get on? I don't think that they can get on. Oh, okay. I just disabled GSX, and I thought that there would be <laughs> I thought that there would be an option to re-enable it, but there's not. Cool. Fine. Right. We'll do without GSX then. Uh, that's something that I need to work on. Pre-start checks. Uh, the INSs I'm not going to use for this flight. The radios, uh, we've set the radios. Let's put the transponder onto standby. The radio INS switch is radio on both sides. Um, 
the engine anti-ice warning lights are off. The pitot heat is off, the emergency exit light is on, so we've done the uh, seatbelt switch, the ignition switches, the starters and everything are all off. Uh, the anti-skid switch is off. Landing and taxi lights are all off. Uh, rain removal off, parking brakes on. Spoilers are off and disarmed. Uh, the oil pressure lights are on. Hydraulic uh, warning lights are all on. The wing flaps are set to zero. Uh, indicating about seven or eight. Autopilot controls are off. Uh, outside air temperature is 23 degrees. Uh, so I'm going to check out the performance charts now and see what we need for takeoff. So we need V1, V rotate, and V2, and the EPR for takeoff, and the climb EPR. Um, so our takeoff weight will be 170 plus 39, so 209,000 pounds. Um, so first of all, the engine EPR with an outside temperature of 20 degrees at sea level is 1.87. I'm just going to write these down, then I'll um, then I'll program everything in on the actual aircraft in a sec. Um, climb thrust is going to be 1.65. Uh, I think. Because we're quite light, we can get away with a flap 15 takeoff today. V1 will be 109. Rotate at one twenty five and V two of one forty three, all really low speeds. And that's for a flap fifteen departure. And so first of all the EPR will set one point eight seven for departure. Take off speeds.
So we'll take 109. 125. And 143. And I'll set this one. That's already there, 250 knots. So that's all of the speeds um, established for departure. Uh, we've got both these switches on VOR and on the FO side, they're both on VOR as well. Fine. Yeah, it's the pre-start challenge, the parking brake is set. And the hydraulic fluid quantity is good. Hydraulic air and brake pressure we just checked are fine. Um, the engine hydraulic pumps are both on, but not actually operating. Engine oil quantity is good, a bit lower on three, but still good. The cabin pressure is set down to zero. Checking again to see how we can fly by um, depressurized. I still can't see it, so um, I guess that we'll just fly without the cabin compressors on. There must be a way of doing it, I just can't um, see the switches there. Um, next thing, the fuel tank selectors. Well, I've printed off um, a fuel systems guide this time, which was on the Aerosoft forum. Um, so prior to engine start, <coughs> it's like a separate little set of checklists for the fuel system. Um, so the fuel tank quantity selector bugs go in the full clockwise position which is this little line here and they're all in the full clockwise position unless you've got fuel in the center which we don't um, step three all of the main alternate levers the big white knob they're all in main um, the corresponding pumps go to boost and feed That's the main ones. The crossfeed levers are normal. Fire shut off levers are normal. And the forward auxiliary tank selector is off. Fine, so basically before departure you just flick all of the mains onto um, boost. There is nothing on there about um, about the fill knobs. So this fill knob is still open off the last uh, flight so we're supposed to leave it open to give the fuel uh, somewhere to go. I'll switch that off. Fine, so that's the fuel system set. The fuel quantity is checked at 39,000 pounds. The EPR bugs are set. 
Now the yaw damper is off, the fuel shut offs, uh, which is these, they're all off. The radios are checked. Um, yeah, and we've got DME there. Uh, it's the only other thing we need to shut the doors. Which, if I can remember the shortcut, that's it. Control and C's done it. So that's the belly door shut and uh, passenger doors are shut. Not that we needed them. Um, jetways disconnected. Yeah, well, I think we can be pretty sure the jetways are disconnected since they don't physically exist anymore. Um, and the anti-collision lights are on. This is going to be an old school pushback uh, in the shift and P style of things. First of all, let's get the engine started. So, uh, let's say that we're cleared for start, so I'm going to request the external air. While that kicks in, I'm moving my uh, joystick and stuff. Do bear with. That works. And the throttle quadrant. Yeah, that works. Good. Uh, so we've got the air, so let's um, get this panel ready for the engine starts. So the galley power, uh, we switch that off. The freon compressors are off. The recirculating fans are off. Cabin compressors are off. And the pneumatic pressure is about 35 pounds each side. Alright, so sequence is three, four, two, one. So engine three, let's get the start ignition on. Start of three. It's a shame that you can never really hear them start up because the um, the, the whistly thing is so loud. Right, that's engine three.
to One. Four engine starts. Let's remove the pneumatics, the hair dryer. Uh, so we've got stable fuel flow on all four. And good oil pressure, increasing oil temperature. Now oil readouts are fine. Everything there looks good. Let's just check on the generators. That's all good. So now we're on battery power and we'll parallel the generators. And there we go. So we've got nice even load across all four. So we've disconnected the ground pneumatics and the ground electrics. And we're going to Get the aircraft pneumatics to low now. And I'll switch the Freon on for a bit. Pull the passengers down a little bit. So they don't roast. We can disarm the ignition now, we can switch the pito heat on, check on the hydraulics, so these two gauges are fine. Right, that's good, we've got all good hydraulics there. the recirculating fans on for a bit. Actually we'll just leave them on the whole time since we're not using the cabin compressors. Cool. Um, so that's it. I think we'll uh, push back now. So I think we're going to make an easterly departure, so it'll be runway 5. We're going to taxi along behind these uh, business jets, and then down this taxiway, and then take off in this direction.
the aircraft so light that it's uh, rolling forward by itself. Let's just go back a little bit further. Make sure we can get past him without clipping him. Any good having an outside view? Yeah, it won't do any harm, will it? It'll settle. Hold on. I think we'll leave that up there just so we can get an idea of um, how the aircraft looks from the outside. Um, right, so before taxi checks, uh, the door warning lights are already out. Uh, INS we're not using, the exterior lights. Um, let's go for taxi lights. And that'll do. Uh, wing flap. The wing flaps are set to 15. Uh, flight control check. And you can see that from the outside. But I'm actually looking down here. Flight controls are checked. That's one thing we didn't do, we didn't calculate the trim. Better just double check that on the uh, performance stuff. We need to check the CG for that, and the CG is 28. So we want about two units of trim. Two units of trim is set. Uh, EPR is set. The compressors, one on each side, each side should be off. And they are. They're all off. Now uh, switch the fuel boost pumps to feed only now. I'm just going to check that against my um, my fuel panel here. So basically we, we don't touch that until we're in climb. Right, let's taxi.
One thing that Sky Vector didn't give us was the heading, uh, the VOR course that we should be flying to get up to Lavec. We can get that from our flight plan. The magnetic track is 2905. I'll set an altitude of 6000 and 2905. So after take off it's going to be a left turn to intercept the 2905. Uh, let's use the full length. We won't need it but... Set the anti-skid switch on. Uh, so before takeoff checks, the altimeter is set, the compass uh, we don't have to worry about, windshield heat, I'll just leave that on warm up. Anti ice is not required, the pitot heat is on, the spoilers are retracted. Went into that corner with a bit too much energy. Uh, the wing flaps are 15 and 15. Trim is set. The fuel levers are on. Door warning lights are out. Fuel tank selectors are main. The boost pumps are feed only. The EPR is set. Continuous ignition needs to be set for all engines for takeoff. Anti skid is on and the lights out. And the landing lights. on. Fine. Uh, just check for any land at traffic. Can't see any. The way Good to me. Uh, Unsponder on. Right, gear for takeoff. But just to recap, take off left turn, climb to 6000, um, our zero flap speed, about 200 knots, so we'll retract the flaps as we climb. Um, our EPR after we take off, our limit was 1.65, so we'll set that, but to be honest I don't think we're going to need it because we don't have very much fuel on board. Okay. 
Okay, here we go then. knots. Speed is going up like a rocket. Rotate. That's V2 already. Gear up. <laughs> Look at the smoke belching out the back. Clear of the mountains. Wraps up. Wraps and gear are confirmed up. That outside view now. It's approaching 250. Oh, that's the altitude approaching 6,000. bust through that 6,000. The aircraft is steady at 230 knots, um, just about holding 6,000 there. Trim feels about right. Now we're going to stay on the local pressure. Holding 250 knots nicely there. And let's just check the cabin pressure and see what's happening there. Cabin altitude looks like it's stayed right down. Two and a half thousand feet. That's 
fine. Okay, there's the VOR needle moving. Cool, so that's us basically on course now. Head the oak. Yes, we're already 14 miles from our departure. Heading very shortly across the international date line. One one three point nine is the uh, VOR on the other side, and we're sixty five miles from there. It's not quite as um, it's not quite as VFR conditions as I was expecting. <laughs> we seem to be flying like right in the middle of the uh, cloud layer. To, to go too much higher since we're flying uh, and pressurised. Well, let's go up, let's get a view. Um, pressurisation, where should we set it? to keep the cabin pressurised at 2,000 feet. So here's our island as we start the climb. And on the VFR chart, on the far western side of the island that we're going to be landing so uh, let's just complete the rest of this flight in VFR I think we can we can manage this uh, circle around here how's the fuel looking uh, we've got 34,200 pounds let's give the passengers a nice the view from up on high. better. I think we'll stop the climb at 10,000. That is the island of Upolu. the reefs, coral reefs marked on here, all the way around the edge of the island. Same with the other one. Going through 10,000. So 
let's switch our VOR over to our destination on the captain's side now. <coughs> So we're 45 miles to our destination. On these outboard tanks um, we can start to fill um, the main tanks from the fuel in the orcs now. I'll pump into here. We don't need to do anything on the inboards. Obviously, uh, don't have any sort of special uh, scenery or anything. I've got a, a, a decent level of mesh going on. Um, an Orbex Global Invector. Um, I don't even know if there is any sort of photo scenery of, of these islands. Not to worry. Apia is the capital. Yep, yeah. that's the capital of the island. I guess that that sort of uh, bare-looking strip of land is the <laughs> is our <laughs> arrival airport. Everything always looks really crap in uh, default when you get used to um, get used to like high level sceneries and stuff. Ah, uh, we forgot to fill in uh, Project Fly. So I would like to add Samoa to my. Um, my arrivals. To my passport thing. I don't know if it'll let me do it when we're airborne. We can always try it. Okay, it seems to have picked it up, so maybe maybe we will get it in our passport. Gonna descend now.
Uh, we should probably prepare some landing weights and things, shouldn't we? Um, our landing speed at 35 degrees of flaps will be about 132. Flap 35 round. I think we can make a figure of eight. We can fly between the two islands here um, and then head all the way around and then come in and just land on this runway here. down there. We're just heading down to 3,000 now. Gonna get below these clouds.
highest point is 6,095 feet right in the centre of the island. I think that I'd like to climb up here actually and give, give the passengers a view of that very peak. Once we get past these couple of clouds we'll do that. We'll give them a ride. About 6,000 feet a minute right now. We can head down here. Let's do that. Let's go to the right and then swing around to the left and descend. Then we'll head uh, head in and, and make the arrival.
Yeah, that'll give them something to talk about. Uh, so approach checks, let's just make sure the fuel is where it needs to be. So this is still draining uh, from the orcs into the mains. i close those off for now, I don't want those draining while we're coming in. Um, I've already set the local pressure, which was 29884. Just double check that that hasn't changed actually. 1010, okay. 1010 is set. Um, we've established the landing speed. that we come in under this cloud and set 2,000 feet hydraulics are fine uh, final descent checks threshold speed is determined which is the bug set here no smoking is still on, the flaps we're not going to change yet. Winds are currently 100 at 5. Pretty much perfect, you can kind of make out the uh, field there. Want to reduce the speed now. And it's going to be a flap 35 landing. There's no uh, GSX when we land, so we'll just find our way about uh, flat 10. Gear down. that uh, outside view back on the tower view Got 25 yeah, arm Speed brakes and check. Yeah, we've got spoiler pressure, so the speed brake should just come up for us. 
about 35. damper off. Yep, we got rid of control back. And we just go straight, uh, we taxi straight to the end of the runway. Speed is good, nice stable descent. Let's take this right here actually. That's taxi lights set. corner a bit. <laughs> they clipped one of the signs off. Now where should we go? Where to go? Let's go there.
wraps up. Uh, so that's it, that's the uh, flaps fully retracted. I'm going to connect up the external power car. Uh, shut down the engines. There we go. We hope that you've uh, enjoyed your little tourist flight today. Uh, we've crossed the international date line, which is something. We've gone over a volcano. And we've done it in a very old fashioned aircraft. <clears throat> which is really good fun to fly and I really like this thing um, but you can spark up now And uh, I guess I'll save this flight now and uh, we can decide where we're going to go next time. Uh, thank you for watching, if you've been watching uh, my videos. Only one more thing to do, which is to complete the flight on Project Fly, and there we go. This is where we remembered that we hadn't uh, fired up Project Fly. This is where we went around the volcano and in for the land. Really good flight. Um, let's make sure, if we open the passport, this is American Samoa, where we went from. We've got, we've coloured in that flag. And this is Samoa, so we've coloured in one more flag. That's good, so I'm happy about that. Alright, thank you for watching. Yeah, hopefully, hopefully be back with one more of these soon.